All right. Hey, hey, hey. Sammy Du, the real estate guru, not the guru, coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios and want to talk a little real estate to you today uh, regarding how I go about doing a walkthrough. I actually have a video of a walkthrough that I did not too long ago and want to share with you. Uh, and so if you want to kind of stand by for a moment, I want to make a few points. I made a few notes. I'm looking down a little bit because I want to cover all these notes with you. But uh, I made a few points that I want to make before uh, showing you the video. And uh, then I want you to enjoy the video. The video should pretty much speak for itself. Um, uh, however, uh, this, this whole uh, video and this whole show is all about coaching and mentoring uh, the real estate investor. Uh, there are just so many rookies and folks that's been going to these seminars and YouTube universities and kind of being dumped on the street uh, without really true mentorship, true coaching. And it's my passion to try to do something about that because unfortunately, uh, this group of so-called investors are really bringing a bad name on the investor community as well as creating a bad reputation with motivated sellers, as well as cash buyers like myself. Uh, so I'm, I'm, help, I'm doing my part to extend a hand uh, to help uh, the new investor, the new so-called investor uh, become better. Uh, no, there are no uh, professions, especially highly, uh, highly paid profession, professions that allow you to make a lot of money uh, that does not have mentoring from doctors, attorneys, even the carpenter, the plumber, you know, they're, they call it apprentices and internships. And in the police world, they call it field training officer. Uh, I was a former cop. And even after all the training, you put a gun on your hip, they still put you with a mentor. And real estate is a high paying uh, profession. But, uh, it, you know, it still also requires a mentor. So if you're, if you're all about your business, then you want to treat it like a business, invest in yourself and learn your craft, you need a mentor. So this channel is here to help you do that. Uh, in part here uh, today, I want to show you how I go about uh, walking uh, through a property. Uh, there are some key items I, I, I tend to want to capture. And um, I do want to make a couple of points while... I'm looking down here. Uh, the first thing is uh, property conditions uh, are always going to vary. And for the most part, if you're dealing with a distressed seller, uh, those, those properties are always going to look, uh, let's just say, not so attractive. Um, and I'm talking even their living conditions. Uh, uh, unfortunately, sometimes if they're going through a depression state or just, uh, you know, very uh, strained or stressed on some things, their house may be in disarray. Uh, sometimes, you know, that's just the way people live, they're hoarders, things of that nature. Um, so just keep in mind that uh, uh, you may find and see anything in walking through a house, but you always want to be remain professional. Never embarrass the seller. In fact, oftentimes, uh, sellers that actually do have a sense of dignity and, and a sense of pride about themselves uh, oftentimes would not really want you to see the house. And I just let them know, I'm not here to see your stuff. I'm here to see the house. And I let them know that I've seen plenty of houses, which is true. I've seen plenty, plenty, plenty. And I always tell them I've seen houses that have been worse than this. And uh, uh, so it does make them feel a little bit better. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just, you just don't want to embarrass the seller, but it, it is your responsibility if you're going to acquire a property to take a look at it. And you definitely want to uh, do that while the frying pan is hot, while, while, while you're there. Um, and so uh, make sure you don't embarrass the seller. Don't make them feel any worse than what they may already feel because of the situation that they might be in. And I might even say, too, that uh, you never know. Uh, they may not have always been the way that they are. Um, there, there could just be something driving that. So just have some respect for their situation. I also want to make you uh, make it very clear that uh, when I walk a house and if I know that I'm basically going to wholesale it to a cash investor, 
I don't hide anything about the house. I don't try to cover up anything or hide anything. I try to be as transparent as possible by letting the house speak for itself. Uh, most investors have, at least seasoned investors, are, are used to situations uh, with a property as far as the amount of work that needs to be done or whatnot. And uh, frankly, if they can do the work and want to perform the work, they will. And the damages are uh, the extraordinary, you know, difficult issues of a property wouldn't, wouldn't scare them off. Uh, so I would, uh, and, and not only that, if you look like you're trying to hide information and hide something for, from a possible cash buyer, you are going to ruin your credibility in, in, before it even gets off the ground because we are a very small community. And for those that uh, are in the game regularly, uh, we, we talk to each other and you don't want them to say, hey, uh, this has come from, you know, Precious World Enterprises or Sam Nelson and we know his stuff is always like crap. He's always trying to oversell. He's always trying to understate the damages and the repairs and he's just always trying to slide something under uh, uh, our eyes. So we, we just want him to look at anything that he might put out there. Or they may just say, hey, this guy clearly doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, we didn't got we don't have time to wipe noses, <laughs> don't have time to babysit. My money is real money. I'm not trying to throw my money away. That's not what I'm about. And they still will pass over you. So for me, I want to be as transparent as possible with the property, and uh, make sure I get some good quality information regarding the property. Not to mention because of the many properties I do, I, I obviously know where some of the key areas of interest that an investor would like because these are always going to be kind of big ticket items. Um, one of the things I would do uh, is I would always make sure you take a lot of pictures, 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 pictures. You can't take enough pictures. Uh, pictures do uh, help a whole lot uh, with a possible cash buyer. Uh, the more they can see in the pictures, uh, you know, they may even get to a, uh, decision much quicker if they want to continue to go forward um, but I also like sometimes to do videos in which I'm going to show you one today uh, because pictures doesn't necessarily tell you the entire story when it comes to say the flow of the house so the video can kind of help you with the flow of the house but then uh, pictures can give you the opportunity to slow down and you know you're taking a look at a still shot versus a moving shot uh, so you can kind of make the proper assessments even as a cash buyer. So I tend to like to do a lot of pictures and then I'll try to do a one decent video. Uh, make sure when you're doing pictures and videos, if possible, make sure you can turn on all the lights. Make sure you can turn on all the lights. Now before you do that, you talk to the seller and then make sure that it's okay. You know, ma'am, sir, uh, I do need to get a lot of pictures so I can talk to my partners about and uh, do you mind if I turn on the lights? I want to make sure I can get some good assessments from the pictures that we have and uh, the lighting will be uh, helpful if you don't mind. And I promise to turn them off uh, once I'm done. But for now, if you don't mind, I need to turn on all the lights. And I also try to make sure that um, I'm respectful to the seller and not having them be included in the shots, because oftentimes they don't really want to be in the shot. Uh, they may be feeling a little embarrassed about their situation anyway, or they just may be camera shot. And that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. I don't, I don't need them in the shot. I'm looking for the house, not them. Um, so uh, you want to be respectful in having that type of communication with them. Uh, also, I would recommend you always bring a flashlight. Always bring a flashlight, even during the day. When you're going to look at a property, you want to take a flashlight with you. I carry, I'm an old cop, so I carry a uh, Mac light. Uh, I don't have it handy here. It's probably in the car. Uh, but um, I always carry, I, I carry one of the big Mac lights uh, like, like the cops because I just love it. It's a good weapon, too, if you need it. But, <laughs> but um, you, you want to carry a light even in the day because sometimes you get to rooms where the, the, the lighting there is blown or, um, you know, for whatever reason, there's not enough light. Sometimes we need to look in the closet where the water heater is or the HVAC system is. There's definitely not a, enough light there. But there are some key things you want to look at in those particular areas with, with the, those types of appliances. Uh, so make sure you always carry a flashlight, even during the day. Um, also, 
just so you'll know, oftentimes in distressed properties, you're going to have a lot of overgrowth in the yard, uh, from the bushes to trees and even the grass. Um, of course, we have a lot of overgrowth. It's very, very inviting to wild nature. <laughs> uh, by that, I mean, uh, you might see extra rodents, extra snakes, of course, comes with extra rodents uh, because of their urin urinary tr trails that they leave that draws the snakes there. And you just want to be mindful when you're walking through that growth where you're stepping. I know many investors uh, wear boots uh, when they're walking properties. Uh, I have yet to, to buy a pair. I've got some water type boots, but uh, and if it gets too bad, I'll slide those on. But um, uh, it, is, it is a good practice to, to have some high uh, level shoes, especially if you're going to be out there in the growth. Oftentimes, I, you know, I've seen enough of the growth and all that. I don't necessarily need to walk through all of it. But uh, just want to give you a heads up that uh, that could be a challenge for you if you're not used to it. You come out with stickers and uh, you know, thorns and things that might be sticking to your, you know, your pants, your jeans, or whatever you're wearing. I remember in one property, um, I was dealing with a five acre lot and we acquired uh, chiggers. That was a new experience, very new experience. Painful too, uh, I might add, but uh, uh, that, that's one of those situations that's typically in rural areas where there's a lot of animals, horses, cattle, things of that nature. Uh, but uh, that was a learning experience to have uh, been in that in that property in that yard in that acreage and uh, experiencing the chigger bites because those things you you don't necessarily know that's happening until the night <laughs> night comes and then you wonder where all these bumps are coming from and then they start hurting blah, 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 blah. so anyway you're subject to that when you walk in property especially with a lot of growth also properties might have pets and of course if you hear about them. Uh, you obviously are welcome and should ask about the seller so uh, those pets uh, can, um, uh, you know, not be disturbed per se. Uh, some sellers will say, oh, they won't do anything. Uh, I would treat all animals as they could be dangerous because they have teeth <laughs> and uh, they may be friendly to the owner. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll be friendly to you. However, uh, I've seen them, I've been around with the pets and all, and uh, you have to make up your own judgment for your own safety. Uh, typically, if it's a dog, uh, I tend to kind of test the dog. If the owner is saying it's okay, I kind of test the dog by showing the back of my hand to the dog's uh, snout so they can kind of just smell. And sometimes that's all they need to do is just kind of smell you, get familiar with you and don't, you know, doesn't feel like that you're a threat to them in that environment and they'll, you know, pass on by. Uh, so, but you have to be mindful of that. And if, of course, if you got pet allergies and things of that nature, you may need to do something different to protect yourself uh, going into, uh, especially into the real estate business because you, you're subject to run into anything uh, in real estate. Uh, I mean, from an animal standpoint, I've, I was in one property. This was a celebrity uh, with uh, Lucy show. He, he actually lived uh, in, a, in a ranch down here in, in Texas where I am. And um, he, he was retiring, dying of uh, skin or of blood cancer, actually. Um, and, uh, but, and he used to be on the, on the Lucio Ball show back in the 70s. And he had a lot of animals. He had, I don't know, 20, 30 cats, several dogs, even birds, all in the same house. It was a really, 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 really filthy and disgusting type situation. Uh, and in that particular house, I had to pass on because the cinch in that house was so disgusting. He lived, he lived in a cedar log cabin, and that cinch had soaked up in the cedar that we couldn't even chemically clean it well. And uh, talking with my cleaning company about that situation, uh, they said that uh, you go in there, you're going to have to wear biohazard you know, uniforms, things of that nature, because you're subject to capture some type of cancer from the various feces and fluids and things of that nature. So uh, long story short, that's what I learned that that's obviously uh, why the seller had blood cancer because he had been in that environment so much. But I brought that up because I wanted to make sure you understood uh, that you can run into anything and you want to make sure you protect yourself from it. And hey, you know, maybe real estate may not be for you if that's a kind of situation that 
uh, could, could really uh, get under your skin and be a health hazard to you. Um, another item uh, that I do want to call out are guns. Sometimes you can walk a property and there is a gun either behind the door or laying on the, on the, on the, on the couch or on the table or something like that. If you've never seen a weapon, uh, just understand that sometimes you can see one while you're walking a property. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily pursue it to be threatening, but I'm definitely going to be mindful that obviously there's a gun in the house. I treat all homes, frankly, as if it, they are armed, to be frank. Uh, being an ex-cop, I'm just programmed uh, that way to kind of you know, be on the lookout for any dangers. And if I identify those harmful type things, guns, knives, swords, things of that nature, I just want to be mindful and always remain alert as to where the parties that I'm engaging with is in the property, as well as where those types of weapons are in the property. Um, it's not a good practice, but you know, when you're in your own home, I guess you can do what you want, but it's not really a good practice to have that kind of thing out when you have visitors in your home. Uh, but, you know, not everybody thinks that way. And again, the purpose of me being in that property is not for their weapons. So, but if you've never seen one, um, it could spook you. It could make you nervous. Um, and, uh, of course, in Texas, a uh, lone star state, uh, we see a lot of weapons here. <laughs> um, and I don't say I see them in every property I walk into, but I have seen them. So uh, just be on the lookout that that could be a possibility. Uh, you know, I would just, again, be mindful that uh, you know weapons there you don't have to engage with or even bring it up or talk to them about it just you just want to be mindful and uh, keep moving always remain professional and uh, calm and get your job done as far as looking at the property and taking pictures so with that being said i'm going to uh, share my screen and uh, run let this video run for for a little bit and give you an idea of how i walk it and then i'll come back with uh, some some closing uh, points that I want to make. Um, so give me just a second, we'll run this. I uh, blotted out the address for obviously the privacy, so, um, but you're gonna kind of hear me also narrating the video as well, so we'll let that speak for itself. Uh, very East Austin, Texas. Uh, east out 969 and close to Wimberley. So we're taking a tour. This is a three bedroom, two bath, uh, about 1,250 square feet. See, there's the side. Uh, there is a roof leak somewhere that is occurring. There's evidence of it inside, uh, but as you can see, the roof really appears to be in good condition, so chances are it's just a spot that the water's traveling to. shots on this but I did have my flashlight for the steel shots when I took the steel shots just came on as you may be able to hear it's working uh, electrical panel I know it's hard to see the panel and the water there's water softener very hard to see here in the dark uh, but understand it's not working. 
but I have found water softeners are pretty simple to get re restarted. And this is the water heater, and you'll need to look at a steel shot uh, when I took the picture with the flashlight in my hand. So, uh, but the water heater is in really good shape. I will go back. It's not rusted at the bottom. Really, really good shape. This house was built uh, 2005. Uh, this has the original water heater in it, uh, apparently. It was uh, serial number since 2005 on it. Okay, a couple of points I want to make with regards to the electrical. I always get a close-up shot of the electrical panel. Uh, oftentimes, contractors, uh, as well as the cash buyers, who has got a lot of experience with flipping, will want to know uh, how old and the condition of the electrical system in the house. Um, there's a difference, obviously, between the aluminum and the copper. And with regards, I believe it's 1978. Or 77, one, somewhere in there, uh, they have to transfer everything from aluminum to copper uh, for whatever regulations exist. And uh, it does make a difference when it comes to the quality of the electric in the house from uh, 110 voltage to 220 voltage, et cetera. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is the water heater, very, very uh, key item that most uh, cash buyers want to look at. Uh, the, the condition of the water heater obviously could be a, an expensive, it needs to be changed out, and it can be uh, very well gauged by how the bottom of the water heater looks. Uh, typically, a, a good situation is that the water heater is actually in a tray, not just sitting on the wood, and in a tray, and uh, no rust, no water, uh, things of that nature. Uh, at the bottom, and uh, if, it, if it's not sitting in a trade, it could be a challenge. And of course, if there's rust and things of that nature, it could be a good indication that uh, you may need to change out that water heater. And uh, of course, the water softener in this case, uh, you know, they're not in every house, won't be in every house, but it happened to be in this particular house. And um, uh, just you want to, you know, obviously acknowledge if there is one there, what kind of condition it's in. Uh, but those are not as difficult to handle, um, um, you, know, um, you know, from an appliance standpoint, but it's always great to know. Uh, let me let the video continue. We're going back in. Okay. All right, back into the main room. Uh, as I mentioned, outside, there is evidence of a of roof leak. And as you can see inside, this is the result of that. We do think it's probably a minor situation because again, the roof looks to be in pretty. And let's just talk about that. Before I went in the house, you know I got a video of the outside and I worked very hard to get as much of the roof in the video as I could. And from what we saw on the outside, it didn't really look like a bad or damaged roof, which um, Sometimes you do have bad damage roofs. You can kind of see it from the outside and with the warps and over, over tile and chip tile, uh, uh, shingles and, and chip shingles and things of that nature. Uh, whether it's, you know, uh, <clears throat> shingles or even stone or cobblestone or whatnot, you, you can just get a good idea. And in this case, because the roof didn't look so bad, uh, definitely seemed to be uh, probably a smaller problem on the roof. It's possibly uh, something that's going up along the chimney stack or one of the vent pipes, uh, possibly that there's just a small leak. And to be honest, water travels, so the leak may not even be right there at that spot. It can be somewhere else that the water traveled to. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure uh, that you saw uh, that because obviously there's something going on uh, with the interior of the property. So I'm gonna keep going. Shape. Entering the kitchen and uh, the appliances will remain. Uh, you see the dishwasher. I think there, I think the overhead uh, range may be inoperable. Here's a stove, obviously, a gas stove, refrigerator, and all this will. Remain. Uh, 
uh, the deep freezer obviously will not. Uh, and it does have washer and dryer, and we'll catch that on the way back. One quick note with regards to the appliances. Um, in this case, and you hear me sharing in the video that uh, certain appliances will remain and certain will not. I will just tell you um, there are some common practices, and uh, but the common practices doesn't necessarily mean what is happening in this particular transaction. Common practices is typically arranged, uh, will stay, um, and you'll have to supply a refrigerator if you're buying a house new. Uh, in this case, I negotiated that the range as well as the refrigerator would stay. Uh, however, she would uh, can have, keep her deep freezer. If I wanted to negotiate keeping the deep freezer, we could have included that. Possibly could have kept the deep freezer as well, as well as the wash and dryer. Um, so just keep in mind that all of those appliance situations are always negotiable. Uh, but just commonly speaking, um, uh, in, in the business, uh, so when you're just dealing with one home owner to the next, is typically in the range that stays, and maybe the refrigerator. Um, but most of the time, it's just typically the range. The other thing too is identifying that the range is gas and versus electric. Uh, we also identify that with the water heater is gas versus electric. So for one, we know that gas runs into this property, and then the other thing is you want to know uh, as far as those various hookups. Uh, the range uh, could be gas as well, or it may not be. Uh, the water heater may be gas as well, or it may not be. And guess what? Even the dryer uh, with the wash and dryer may be gas as well, or it may not be. That's kind of old school, but hey, you'd be surprised. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let the video resume. This is the dining area. Uh, this is the dining area. This is the dining area. We're going to go out the back door really quick just so you can get a look out there. We'll have uh, some still shots as well. Watch out for the snake. Very nice neighborhood. But uh, you can see this is the backyard. A lot of growth, but nothing really that major. You can see. Again, here the roof looks in pretty, pretty good shape as well. And just a lot of growth on the side of the building there, actually on both sides. Uh, we do have uh, some window panes, and I believe they're double, uh, that needs to be repaired. There's a pebble up in the right corner, a pebble hole uh, in that window. This one has a, a little larger hole. Uh, this one looks like to be fine. Uh, back in. Just before going back in, I also want to let you know this. Uh, this seller told me that in the backyard, and um, I know it was probably back there where that bush along the fence was, but uh, that her uncle was buried um, back there, and mostly by way of ash. Uh, so apparently he was cremated and uh, they poured the ash back near that, that bush. But uh, uh, you'd be surprised at things you might learn from a seller and um, certain things and in certain places, uh, you know, certain things like that might have to be disclosed. Uh, I know of one property I was dealing with where someone actually committed suicide in the property. That is something that needs to be disclosed. Uh, but uh, as far as sprinkling of ash, I don't think that's one. But it's obviously something that uh, you would want to be mindful of. All right. Going back in here. And uh, we'll visit with the master bedroom. And you can see very good bones on the property. Master bedroom, closet. Seller get it to foreclosure, so we need to move very quickly to help uh, this person out. This is the uh, master bath. Very good 
shape here. Shower. Also a really good shape. And uh, a few steel pictures to look at. Anything you might want to revisit. Uh, here's a toilet. So, not sure what's going on there, but um, looks like uh, some tar paint or something. So, they need to put another toilet in. But uh, otherwise, here's a closet in the master bath. So there's a closet in the master bedroom as well as in the bathroom itself. And this is the first of two bathrooms. We're heading back out and back into the kitchen. Uh, and then we're going to check out just another thing uh, that I want to speak to. I didn't really speak to it in the video, but it was done on purpose is I was getting video shot of the floor. That wasn't just because I wasn't paying attention to the camera. That was an intentional act that I wanted to allow, uh, if I were to show this video to a cash buyer, uh, them to see what type of floor was in that property. In this case, it's linoleum and carpet. And we can see the condition of that floor. So you have an idea of you're gonna have to change out the floor. The carpet can be cleaned or, or changed out. It obviously goes into the expense. So. These were actual intentional shots, not me not paying attention to what I was doing. This was intentional. These other uh, two rooms, but before I get there, let me show the washer and dryer hookup. Functional. Of course, wash and dry up will not remain. There's the intake for the HVAC system. Obviously, you need to change the filter there. One of the things I look at is the filter going into the AC because if it's very, very, very clogged up, uh, there could be an indication of the actual HVAC system being bad as well because that filter is designed to keep debris and dust and things from getting in that into the system and if you don't change that filter it does wear and tear on the actual system itself so just looking at the vent lets me know if the homeowner or seller uh, has been managing that well and when I see a clogged one uh, or a very 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 filthy one then in my mind I'm wondering truly what the condition of the HVAC system is you know in many cases you can still be salvaged but in some cases severe cases it may be a problem i know when i was there i heard it come on and it sounded well it didn't sound like it was working that hard uh, she actually had a filter in the house um, and i actually took the time to change that out for her while while i was there um, so but that uh, again was an intentional shot and for a reason the second bathroom. Uh, again, good condition. Very good condition. It's a little 409 maybe. Then here is a second uh, bedroom because it does have a closet, uh, although it's being used as a den and such. With this little couch here. Uh, and you see the second bedroom, currently being used as a den. And then bedroom, obviously being used as a bedroom, closet, foundations and 
very solid shape. Um, of course, any locations you may need to look at a still shot if you want to see us see it again. But uh, this is 30. All right. So I'm closing out. Uh, I was getting ready to repeat the, the address. I don't want to do that uh, for this video. Um, and um, uh, I, I do want to uh, just make a couple of additional points. Whatever you think the condition of a property is, being good, bad, or indifferent, uh, that's important. But it's really more important to be concerned about the numbers on the property. Uh, just because it looks like a nice house, uh, it really depends on the numbers. What what is it going to cost to get into that property, and then how much is it going to cost to do what you need to do with that property, whether you know it's repairs, and depending on your exit strategy. So that also you know really depends on what your cash buyer uh, niche is. Uh, this property. Uh, from an acquisition standpoint, actually had the numbers that were very, very good, uh, not just for rental, and because in part of doing the video, you're looking at the various fixtures. You saw a lot of economy grade type fixtures, faucets and lighting in that property. Nothing, nothing custom, nothing upgrade or no wow factor, just kind of basic items. So uh, if you wanted, if a buyer or that property wanted to kind of keep that and maintain that, uh, chances are you might be looking to just rent it out. And his acquisition, his acquisition price uh, could even be higher, uh, will even be higher than a fix and flipper. Uh, on the same token, um, if it's a fix and flipper, their acquisition price is gonna be a little lower because chances are they're gonna to wanna to upgrade all of those items uh, in that property. Uh, so kind of depending on what your niche is and what your cash buyer's niche is, you know, it just kind of depends. It doesn't really, you, you don't know until you're, you're talking to them, but this kind of helps them decide and it helps you to be able to target uh, the, the cash buyer that you're looking for, uh, whether, you know, with regards to your buyer's list. So uh, this property and the numbers in this particular property was actually very, very, very good for both. Uh, and a great fix and flip, uh, do a lot of upgrades, uh, and, and then when you consider the subdivision that it was in out there in uh, East Austin, uh, definitely a lot of room for that. Uh, there is a lot of rental properties out there as well, so there were cash buyers uh, really making the decision uh, to buy just simply off of the video, didn't necessarily even need to go and inspect the property in person because they were very happy with the amount of video uh, and the type of video that I did. Also keep in mind that uh, in the video, I wasn't trying to sell the property. I was just, you know, narrating, you know, about the property where I was in there, but you don't really want to go trying to sell the property and, oh, look what you can do with this. And this is just beautiful. And, and uh, there are many different ways you can go with this, blah, blah, blah. Let the property speak for itself and the cash buyer uh, that's going to buy the property, it's, it's, you know, despite what you say, if they're very seasoned, they're going to have their own ideals about it anyway for the property. Great. The, the, the main thing is for them is you were able to get this property in front of them to check out. So uh, you don't have to really sell the property would sell itself to the right type of investor. And um, so, and the key thing is know your stuff and know their stuff. And that way, uh, when you're putting something out, you can target who you're putting it out, the way that you put it out, uh, the, the type of message that you put it out. So you look very, very credible, like you know what you're doing. And the more times you do that and you begin to build a reputation, you'll have folks that just love you and call you and say, hey, man, what you got? You got anything coming up? Because I'm looking for this and things of that nature. And uh, that's the way you build a great relationship. Uh, this thing about just going into some group talking about, I'm looking for a cash buyer over there, kind of kind of ridiculous. I'm gonna just tell you, if you got a great deal, if you understand what that great deal is, there's always gonna be a buyer for it. You just have to get the information in front of the buyer. And you know what? It only takes one. <laughs> you don't have to have 100 buyers. You just have to have a buyer for that property. <laughs> so um, I wanted to make those points. If you are, 
uh, needing uh, some help getting your business off the ground, uh, I do offer mentoring services. Uh, whether you want to book an hour with me and I can in an hour try to uh, identify, you know, we can talk about your business model and what you're doing, how you're doing, we can kind of fine tune that and uh, get you some action items out of that. And if you want even a longer term mentorship with me, uh, we can discuss that during the booking. Uh, you should find a link uh, somewhere in the description or somewhere around this video. Uh, just go ahead and book and uh, we'll, we'll have a Zoom chat and kind of talk about how uh, to get, get your, your business off the ground. Um, also, uh, subscribe to this video, uh, subscribe to the channel or follow me if you like. Uh, and even if you don't like, go ahead and put some comments in. Come in if you like, come in if you don't like. Uh, and uh, so I'll know. Uh, if you like it, I'll, I'll continue to put uh, more of this kind of thing out there. Uh, if you don't like it, I'd like to know that too, because I don't like wasting my time, nor do I want to waste your time. <laughs> uh, I'm a full-time real estate guru, not a guru. And um, I'm just, you know, my mentor has told me it's time to reach one, teach one. And because of the mess that I've been seeing in the streets uh, with regards to all these new rookie, new you know, so-called investors is kind of jacking up the, the, the profession and giving us a bad name. I'm, I'm looking to, to help, help a few of you guys. So at the time of this video, I do have room to take on a few more uh, mentees anywhere in the country. So again, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, partner up and uh, let me help you out, give you some words of wisdom, give you some action points within your business that you can do to kind of get your business going, help you get your first deal or your second deal, or just get a little bit more steady. Hit the link, follow me. You can find me on all the various uh, uh, social media places, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, uh, whatever else, LinkedIn. Just query my name, Sam Melson, M-E-L-S-O-N and uh, you'll, you'll see my content and you can DM me, PM me, et cetera. So anyway, uh, I'll uh, go ahead and, and let this resume. And uh, until then, I'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. <laughs>